What is skinning, other than something you might not want to do to your knuckles on a regular basis? Well, as the name might suggest, and this process is called different things in different 3D applications, but has the same function regardless, is the process of putting skin, as you might call it, onto your armature bones. There's two main ways to do skinning in Blender, excluding the skin modifier, which has similar meanings but much different functions, and I've covered the, that before. The first way is to parent an object or objects to an armature and let Blender do its thing. However, the object's children will not be affected. As you can see, the child of our cube, which is the parent, which is parented to our armature, is the only one affected by the armature. The child is not affected at all. It's only affected by its parent in a regular parenting function. The second is using envelope weights to skin certain parts of an object's mesh to a bone or a bone structure. Derek from BlenderTech.com here. If this video helps you un understand armatures, rigs, animations, skinning, parenting, or anything similar in any way, consider liking the video and consider subscribing for regular Blender, Unity 3D, coding, and all sorts of other related videos. Lastly, our motto, create your way. Let's look at the parenting method first. I'm sure you're all familiar with it by using the automatic weights option on a character or just to play around. This being an overview, we will just be playing around. So let's create a couple of bones first. I'm going to simply hit Shift A, add an armature, single bone. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to move my 3D cursor and I'm going to hit Shift A to add a new unconnected bone. So we now have two bones of roughly the same size in roughly the same position. Let's tab out of edit mode, move our 3D cursor again, and let's add a 3D mesh. I will use the standard cube in this case and scale it down so that we can see what's happening. Let's take our cube now and shift and right click on our armature. The armature in bright orange being the last selected item and the darker orange being a previously selected item. And pressing control P, we can set a parent. We want to parent this to our bones. However, like I said, you usually would do this with automatic weights, or I'm sure most of you probably have. Let's do that and see what happens. As you'll see, we have a parenting grid line appear, or a dash line, I suppose you could call it. So what exactly does this do? Well, if we go and select our armature by right clicking on it, and control tabbing into pose mode, now when we select a bone, it deforms our 3D mesh. If we choose our other bone, it does the same thing. How does this work and why? Well, if we go into object mode and then select our 3D mesh being our cube and then go into a weight paint mode, you will see how the mesh is being affected by each bone. If we go into the object data tab under the vertex groups panel, you'll see we have a vertex group for each bone, bone and bone 001, bone being on the left, bone 001 being on the right. You'll see they each have different colors associated with them, blue meaning they'll have the least amount of deformation and darker going up to red meaning they have the most amount of deformation and we can edit this manually obviously however for meshes that have very strict structures like a cube and not organic like character you obviously see the see you saw the results that happens it, it leads to very very unusual deformation a cube should not be deforming like that and it leads to artifacting at certain points. So what can we do to change this? Well, let's undo our parenting and start fresh. So we're back to just having our cube and our armature. Let's do the same thing, select our cube and then our armature by shift right clicking on it. Then hit control P again. This time let's hit armature deform 
with envelope weights. You can also choose empty groups. Either one will work roughly the same, but we'll choose envelope weights. You'll see if I go and select the 3D mesh and go into weight paint mode that they have much different colors this time. Bone 001 and bone. They have almost no deformation. So if we select our armature and control tab into pose mode again, you'll see it's really not affecting it at all. This one managed to get one vertice stuck to it, which it wouldn't have with empty groups, but that is easily fixed by selecting our 3D mesh, going into weight paint mode, selecting the bone in our vertex group, and then pressing T to open up our brush tools, using subtract and drawing over the entire thing until it turns completely blue. That is what an empty group situation would essentially put you in. Let's try that just for sake of completeness. So we'll go back to the beginning again. So again, the same process, but this time we'll use empty groups. This time, if we select our 3D mesh and go into weight paint mode, they're completely blue all the way around for both bones, meaning there will be no deformation of, of our 3D mesh. Now, this is desirable when you have, say, mechanical models and such, or for other situations. Let me show you why. By having vertex groups like this, we can effectively tell Blender which bone is going to affect which part of the mesh. Weight painting, however, though, isn't exactly what I would consider skinning. Let's instead go into edit mode and Let's select the entire left side of this cube and let's assign it to the left side bone. So bone 001, I should have named them properly and we'll hit assign. Now if we press A to deselect all, when we press select, we'll see that that it selects those vertexes. You may have come across this before, however, you'll see what this does in a moment. Now let's deselect that by hitting deselect or pressing A until everything's deselected. And let's shift and right click on the entire right side of the object and select bone and do the same. Let's hit assign. You'll see if we go into weight paint mode again, it has it has done weight painting, so you could consider weight painting a skinning method to some degree. However, I consider manually assigning edges, vertexes, and faces to certain vertex groups bones to be the true skinning method. Let's see what happens when we pose our armature now. So we'll select our armature, control tab into pose mode. Let's select the first one we did, bone 001, and see what happens when we move it. As you can see, it's moving only those four vertices. So you can see how this could be useful for mechanical models because it's only deforming sorry there goes a backup beeper more construction noise it's only deforming anything that isn't that hasn't been assigned to a by us before and if we select the other bone the same thing you get the reverse effect the only thing being deformed is the edges in between the ver vertices that we did not assign so now, this comes into effect with much more complex things as I've showed you in my how to rig a piston re-overview. However, this can also be used for character models. Let's get rid of this cube. I'm going to tab out of pose mode into object mode. I'm going to delete this cube and I'm going to replace it with, say... Let me just make up some sort of weird shape here very quickly. So we have a fairly organic shape here. Let's parent it to our two independent bone armature. Again with empty groups. 
And again, if we select our armature and go into pose mode with control tab, grabbing a bone does absolutely nothing. But now we can assign by selecting our mesh and tabbing into edit mode, we can assign any vertices we want to bone. So let's say these two little uh, blobs up here were, were a character's eyes. All we'd have to do, and sorry, the bones being the right eye and left eye respectively, all we would have to do is select the vertices that we would want to have deformed and then assign it to its respective bone as we did before. Again, now when we tab into pose mode, you'll see it's only deforming those vertices. Now obviously this can lead to, uh, to artifacting again because it's very strict, but this gives us the ultimate control over what vertices, what edges, and what faces are going to or are not going to be deformed by our bones. And so this can be of most use when we have a very, very complicated armature setup something like say uh one of the rigify armatures we want say for example the hand bones to only affect a very small amount of vertices in our character's model so hopefully this has explained the basic process of skinning to you in a few different ways and in the most basic way if it helped you in any way, consider liking this video and consider subscribing for more videos. Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. We're on Twitter now at Twitter.com slash Blender underscore tech and Facebook at Facebook.com slash Blender tech page. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests and call for help, so if there's a tutorial you'd like to see, or if you're having problems with something, let us know, and it'll go on the list. See you next time, and remember, create your way.